Okay, so for this episode, I'm going to start with an example. All right, uh, so let's consider a pure exchange economy, two individual, two goods, good one and good two. And let's suppose that these two guys are bringing two units of, uh, I mean, agent A brings two uh, units of each good and agent B brings three units of, uh, e sorry, each good. Well, the question is, this is how much endowment, uh, you know, apples and bananas uh, they bring to this market. Well, the question is, um, when they get together, would they want to trade? Uh, well, that depends on their preferences, right? For example, assume that the utility of agent A, so agent A's uh, preferences are represented by this utility function, let's suppose, is the following. A very simple example, uh, a 5x plus y. Oh, let's, let's use the idea of good one, good two. 5x1 plus uh, y uh, uh, x2 all right and uh, what does that mean that means agent one values good one much more than good two so for him good one is very valuable because we multiply the utility by five but good two is not that valuable on the other hand agent b is let's suppose having this utility function uh, x1 plus 5x2. Well, here, in terms of notation, maybe we you may want to put x1a, x2a here, and here x1b, x2b. Why? Well, just to point out that each individual only cares about his or her consumption. So agent A only looks at how much he consumes. However, he does not care about what her, his opponent uh, consumes, all right? So maybe we may have a more complicated environment where agent A's utility, sorry, is equal to, I don't know, 5x1A plus x2A minus 3x1B plus x2B. I don't know. What does that mean? That means I enjoy how much good one and good two I consume, but you know what? The more you consume, I get uh, unhappy. So it's like, it's a, a bit more complicated environment. And we didn't really look at these type of utility functions at all. It's not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's not a technically a problem, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we do not have uh, this sort of utility function. Just to underline this fact, you may want to put A and A here and B and B here. If I don't put A's and B's uh, on top of X's, well, that means uh, by default, I am assuming that everybody cares only about his or her consumption. All right, so here, once again, look at the intuition. This guy, A, cares more about good one, and this guy cares more about good two. So if they do not make any trade, no trade at all, what is going to be their utility? So utility of agent A, when he consumes his initial endowment, all right, is basically, you know, utility of A, 2, 2. So X1 is 2, X2 is 2. So therefore, this is 10 plus 2, 12. However, utility of agent B, it's not however, but is equal to utility of B, 3, 3. So uh, he's going to get higher utility, obviously. Uh, this is 3 plus 15, uh, 18 units. All right, agent B is happier than agent A, but so what? Well, the thing is, is there any way that these guys, I mean, do uh, let me put it this way. Do these guys have incentive to make a trade? Well, what does that mean? That means, is there any allocation, feasible allocation, that is going to make them happier? Is there? Uh, the answer is yes, there is. For instance, consider the following allocation. Um, I'm going to denote them as, uh, yeah, let's not use any notation. So consider this uh, uh, allocation, uh, 5, 0, and 0, 5, okay? So this is, uh, let's call CA, a consumption. This is CB, okay? Um, 
Is this feasible, first of all? Yes, it is. How do I know that? What is the total number of CA1 plus CB1? So what is the total number of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, what is the total demand? Well, five plus zero. Is this equal to WA1 plus WB1? I mean, do we have this many good one? Yes, we have. It's two plus three. So five equals five. So the supply equals demand for good one. Do we have same number of uh, good two? Uh, the, the initial de uh, uh, endowment and the demand. Well, yes, they're demanding five or they're willing to consume five units and they already have five units of uh, uh, endowments for good two. So you know what? This is a feasible allocation. Feasible allocation. What does that mean? That means, in fact, in this world where one guy brings two units of apple, two units of banana, the other guy brings three units of each, they can exchange these goods. Uh, agent A gets all the apples, Agent B gets all the bananas. That's what, what I mean by exchange. And it is feasible, I mean, it's possible. Question is, do they get higher utility? Well, let's calculate. What would be utility of Agent A if he consumes five zero? It's five times five plus zero, so it's 25 units. What about Agent B? Well, he consumes five, oh, sorry, zero unit of good one, five units of good two, so five times five, again, 25. Well, now their level of utilities are the same, but so what? The thing is, what you should be comparing is these numbers, 12 versus 25 and 18 versus 25. Initially, when they came to this market, Agent A's utility level, meaning just, you know, go back home and consume whatever you have, his utility would be 12 and B's utility would be 18. However, if they exchange their goods, they both can enjoy higher levels of utilities. So meaning they can get better off, they can get happier if they exchange or if they trade. So the question is, uh, should they trade and end up this? Um, well, I mean, it's, it sounds like a reasonable sort of uh, outcome, but the question is, is this the best they can achieve? I mean, is there any better uh, trade? I mean, maybe there's an alternative way of uh, exchanging these goods and each agent are gonna get even higher utility than 25. Is it possible? Well, for this specific example, it's not possible, but that's the idea that we are uh, sort of searching now. Uh, given that individuals bring some initial endowments, is it possible to make a trade, voluntary trade, by the way, nobody is forcing them to uh, make a trade. Uh, they're gonna make the trade if they are happier. Otherwise, I mean, if they, if they think the final outcome is gonna be worse for them, of course, they're not going to make a trade. So there's, everything is voluntary here. So is there any volunteer, uh, voluntary trade? And if so, what's going to be the final outcome? or what should be the final outcome. So that's, uh, these are the questions that we are after. Well, um, I am not going to define them here. Uh, I'm gonna do it next, but um, for a, a result of a potential trade must satisfy a few nice properties, obviously. First, you know, a, a result, uh, sort of a final, I mean, final allocation. Final allocation after the trade should satisfy some properties. One, it must be feasible, right? I mean, you cannot consume something which is not existing in this market anyway. Uh, so it must be feasible. Two, it must be efficient. Again, I will define it formally next, but what we mean is, the, or the idea is the following, there is no better way of exchanging this good. Uh, the final outcome uh, is going to, I mean, if you wanna change 
the final outcome, one, one guy is going to uh, sort of veto it. He's, he's not going to be happy. So it doesn't mean that this is the best. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. So the, 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 the trade, there's no room for improvement. Yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, so it must be efficient means there is no room for improvement. All right. Uh, meaning by doing another exchange, uh, we cannot make both agents happier. And the third, uh, we're going to call that it must be, uh, well, better than the initial endowment, obviously. Right? I mean, if the final allocation is not better than the initial uh, endowment, obviously uh, agents are, are going to say, well, I'm not going to trade this because I can go home and consume my products. All right. So therefore, the final outcome allocation must be uh, preferable to the initial endowments. And we're going to call this, by the way, later uh, uh, a core allocation. 